In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add handoff to an iOS app. If you haven't heard of handoff, it lets the user send something that they're doing on one device to another one of their devices wirelessly. So to get started, we're going to have a single view application. Handoff is built on top of the um, concept of activities. Each activity is a separate thing that a user could be doing in your app. So for example, the mail app has two basic activities. They have reading emails and composing emails. You're going to have to decide which activities your app has and which activities you're going to support handoff for. For this app, we're just going to have one activity because it's a exam simple example app. Before you can start doing anything, you have to add your activities to your plist file. In uh, the uh, information property list, you just click whichever one, press the plus button, and you want to call this NS user activities type. You want to change the type that it is to an array, and we're going and you're going to want to add items to this array for each of your activities. We're only creating one activity, so we're going to create it in here. Apple recommends that you um, name your activities in the, in the reverse domain style that uh, you use for bundle identifiers or uh, app groups. So com dot uh, domain uh, dot app name dot then your activity name. So we're going to call this writing. And I'm just going to copy this so I can use it later. Click enter and save your name. So now we can actually start, so now we can actually set up our code to broadcast out to other devices through the OS that, hey, the user is currently doing this activity. So for our example app, we're going to just have a text field where the user can be writing. So we're going to put a text field in here. We're going to stretch it out. Um, add constraints and open up our inspector for it. So, uh, and I'll just link that in there. So, we create our activity in our view did load. So, when our view appears, we're going to start broadcasting that we're doing an activity. There, uh, user. So they're of the type NS user activity, uh, user activity, and of course in here we just put our activity type string. So now we're ready to set up the properties for this uh, user activity. So user activity, first property we need to set is the title. Uh, this I think it is displayed to the user that it's not really explained, uh, but. This should be something that is user friendly, but also relatively descriptive for what you're doing. So we're going to say uh, writing uh, user activity. Uh, the next thing we want to set up the delegate. So where, if the OS needs to call things on this, or this is calling things uh, back to our code, where it's going to be doing that. So the delegate, we're going to use the view controller, so self. And finally, we want to set, why is that wrong? Uh, of course, we need to uh, NS user activity delegate. Set the type, that error will go away in a second. Finally, we need to set. So we have one final property we need to set. It's called user info. Um, and this is the, inf the information that we actually want to pass from this device to the next device, to our app and the other device. So user data, it is a dictionary. So we're just going to, that you can include all your values in and any plist values, so you can include NSURLs, strings, numbers, ints. And in this case, we are just including a string, which is the value of our text field. So in here, we are going to just set our user information to be the text stored in our text field. Finally, we need to set this to be the user activity for this view controller. So self.userActivity equals our user activity that we just created. Yep, going to be happy with that. So yeah, so we've set our user activity. So this is statically setting up our user activity when we open the window. But we want to be able to update our user activity um, after the user's opened the window with whatever the user's doing or has done, which of course in the case of our app will be what they've typed in the text field. To do that, we want to 
first create an action for when they change the text in the text field. So editing changed. Uh, so value changed. So we go text changed, which of course will run whenever the value of our text field has changed. So here you'd think would be really repeating this and setting a new text field value. But it's slightly more complicated than that because when you change these values, it runs a lot of heavier code in the background that we don't want to be doing for every time a character is changed. So instead, we are just going to uh, self dot user activity, just set a property called needs save to true. So this is telling the OS that this user activity has had changes to it and it needs to be saved. The OS will then call a function called user activity will save. Now the OS will call this function at what's the best time to be doing this. So either when it's just thinks it's the best time or when it actually needs that information. So for example, when another device is trying to open the handoff, then it's of course going to save the information. So it's got the latest version. In so in here, we have our user activity property that we're passed. Uh, activity. And then add user info from you. And then add user info entries from directory. And of course, we're just going to recreate the directory we used up here. So text. And then well, again, we're going to put our text field dot text value in there, updating that user uh, info. So now we've set up everything we need to set up to broaden the activities currently being done. That's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to open your app back up and load all those values from the activity back into the new version of your app on the other device.